In 2014, the General Council of the Assemblies of God, Ghana, decided to push the boundaries of missions in the church to a new level. Two new initiatives were approved to push this great agenda forward. A missions funds board was set up and mandated to mobilize financial resources to ensure a holistic and sustainable growth and vitality of all missions programs of the church. Also, a new vision of planting 3,000 churches and doubling the membership of the church within a five-year period was approved. God is on the move, and the Assemblies of God Ghana is on the move. The state of the global church has become very, you know, mixing, positive and negative. Positive in that some parts of the world you can see growth, in some part of the world you can see decline, and in some part of the world you can see persecution, some part of the world you can see peace and security. Vision 3000 came as a result of the Assemblies of God African Alliance agreeing to encourage our people to be filled with the Holy Spirit by declaring a decade of the Holy Spirit or decade of Pentecost. At that declaration, we agreed that all our members should be filled with the Spirit and also we should plant churches. As an offshoot of that, the EP members met at Tamale in 2014 and came out with the Vision 3000. When we talk about Vision 3000, we mean two clear things. We have 3000 churches and in the next five years, we want to plant another 3000 churches. The process of doing this is that every local church should be encouraged to plant at least one local church in five years and that every church member should at least bring one person to Christ in this five years. One person, one soul, one church, one church. Wherever there is no church and we have people, it's an unreached area and the people are unreached people group, not only languages or tribes and clans. So to me, Vision 3000 talks about reaching everywhere with the gospel. Where there's reasonable walking distance, there should be a church. There should not be territories or barriers or anything that should stop us. We must think about homogeneous groups, people who speak the same language, people who have got the same culture and do things, you know, uniformly should be reached. We should reach people wherever they are. Churches should be in the barracks, in the schools, in the hostels, everywhere where people gather. Probably to put it this way, where there is an unbeliever, there is a mission field. Where there is a single Christian among them, he is a missionary. When I say the church is a lifeboat and not a pleasure boat, I mean the church should make evangelism their priority number one, their priority number two, and their priority number three. Without missions, without evangelism, without church planting, there is no church. What makes a church different from all other organizations and institutions is that the church preach Christ and bring people to Christ. So if any organization calls itself a church and it is not preaching and teaching Christ, presenting Christ to the dying world, then I'm afraid it is not a church. Yes. Many times, churches are concerned about things that will make people comfortable. Painting their church buildings, changing seats, requiring different clothes for the women ministry, men ministry, youth and the rest, changing choir ro robes, buying musical instruments for them to feel better. I am not against this, but these things are not a reason for the existence of the church. I see the world, you know, as a sea where people are sailing in boats and the boats 
are sinking without rider, without leadership, without direction. They are crying like sinking Titanic. Save our souls, save our souls. So the church should be there to rescue these people. They should throw out the lifeline because people are sinking. So Vision 3000 is telling the church that evangelism, soul winning, should be an urgent thing, should be the desire, should be the compelling force of the church. If the church is doing any other good thing, minus missions, evangelism, church planting, preaching and teaching, then the church has failed. Well, as we are planting churches, we have some key outcomes. The first and foremost is that Christians are supposed to be the light and the salt of the society. So if we plant this number of churches and thousands of men and women become Christians, society will be transformed and quality of life will be better. Corruption and all those social vices that are plaguing Africa will be minimized. We will also see that uh, churches will be planted across the country where people can gather together to worship God, to have fellowship, to encourage one another. We also see that uh, as the churches grow and we bring more people to Christ, people will be more committed to be diligent and serious with their works. So there will be much productivity. We may also get good leaders to man the affairs of the state. I see it to be bright. In fact, it started last year and I'm told they were able to open around 466 churches. This year, I've been told that by the end of the first quarter, they had printed nearly 200 churches. I'm going, I believe that the Assemblies of God Church will be in every local community. Ghanaians will be discipled and by the end of this vision, 3000, it will be the beginning of a new era of Assemblies of God. There's not going to be terminus of this vision 3000. I believe that our pastors will be motivated, encouraged, challenged, and our people will also be motivated, encouraged, and challenged to continue the work. My thinking is that vision 3000 will spare up a vision and a desire that will go beyond the barriers and the borders of Assemblies of God. I have actually challenged our colleagues in the UK, in the US, in, the, in Germany, in France, everywhere to embark upon this vision and plant churches at where they are. And I'm glad to tell you that they are planting churches over there too. Vision 3000, as was born by the leadership of the Assemblies of God, led by the General Superintendent, was initiated in 2014. 2014, this was ruled out and then inaugurated by the General Superintendent. His team also put together a committee which was supposed to supervise this vision for its implementation and accomplishment. The team that was put together, being a committee to see this implementation, happened to be drawn from the youth ministry director, the missions director, and also the campus ministry coordinator. The able Pastor Reverend Elam was drawn in to be the secretary of this uh, committee and I happen to be privileged to chair this committee. The national committee went down to the various regions putting together committees that would also see to the implementation down in the region. What happened was that the same formation of the regional directors of the youth, the campus ministry, and the missions were brought together, and the members or the representatives of the One Hope 
were also included. And there, the regional committees were also formed, inaugurated, and put together so they can work down within the regions. Currently, we have every regional committee put together in this work, and they are effectively working on the ground. The leadership team of the Assemblies of God took upon ourselves the responsibility of casting the vision in addition to the national committee, regional, fora, and also regional council meeting became the platform for the casting of the vision and through the 2014 into the first part of the first month of 2015 became the period in which the vision 3000 was cast. This is for the purpose of planting 3000 churches within five year period. And the five year period began in the year 2015. We hoping and believing God that by the year 2020, we should have accomplished this and possibly gone beyond what we even intended to do. And then on the 31st night in 2014, uh, this vision was launched. The general superintendent being one person could only be located in one particular local church, which is Glory Assembly of God at Sakumono. And simultaneously, every pastor was also told and encouraged and supposed to launch this program in the same night. This was um, a glorious time, a time that stirred up the organization in looking into and working towards the heartbeat of God, fulfilling the mission of God on earth. This was the time. After the lunch, the program and its organization took about a month within which the team and the committees had to do and put together their planning. And in February 2015, this program was or took off effectively from every region and every place within the Assemblies of God contests, within every region, churches started springing up and it came out of the initiation of this program. And so churches started getting up and people went out, local churches started planting churches, mission groups went out, the campus ministry had been involved and activities have been great. It has been phenomenal. And what has happened so far is that we can share with you that in the year 2015, over 400 churches were planted in Assemblies of God in all the regions across the nation, Ghana. The first challenge that the committee or the team identified was the fact that we will need leaders who will lead these 3,000 churches. In our estimation and calculation, we realized that our Bible colleges, the Southern and the Northern Campus, within this five-year program, would only train around 1,000 or approximately 1,200 pastors within this period. It means that we have a shortfall of 1,800 leadership for the local churches that we intend to plant within the period of five years. Now, how do we go about providing leadership for these churches? The church planting committee had to work around the clock and to meet this challenge, meet this need of leadership. One program that had been uh, rolled out by the committee is 
planting uh, what we call or organizing what we call church planting schools within these church planting schools we go around all the regions and bringing together people who are led by the Lord led by the Spirit of God to be part of this program and to be able to lead the churches that are going to be planted what is happening within this program is that this number of people from every region are put together at a time and trained within a period of time giving the skills and the knowledge they need for church planting and to initiate this program and so the program itself are taking off some regions had already started and we intend to go into every region within the nation of Ghana and be able to train as many leaders that will be able to meet the need. In actual fact, the target is that if we could make about 2,000 leadership or train 2,000 people within this period, then it will augment what the Bible colleges are going to provide as a full-time or tent ministers for this program. We are excited and we feel honored to be part of this program. We believe that we are really touching the heart of God and touching lives, bringing transformation into people's lives. If people are converted, if people are worn into the church, they come out and become children of God. It's an exciting experience and this is what God desires that we do. For us, we are excited that we have been drawn into this program and we are happy to see that this program has rolled out effectively. We can only envision that come the year 2021, when we're going to end this program, we can see us going even beyond the 3,000 projection that we have for ourselves. I, as a chairperson of this committee, and the leader of this team. I am so excited and happy, and I'm really seeing if we've been able to plant four, over 400 churches in the first year, the second year already, we have gone about half of what we did the last year. It means that the achievement of this program is on hand, and we can see it happen. Positive. And I can also add progressive. I can say that it's exciting. And we are seeing God at work. And many more people are coming into the church of God. Many more people are excited also to be part of it. And many leaders are being raised for these churches. The Assemblies of God Missions Fund uh, was established alongside the Vision 3000 so that it will be the backbone uh, for the church plant uh, for the next five years. So I was made the chairman to see to it that uh, fund mobilization uh, becomes uh, stronger and that we'll be able to raise more funds to support the 3,000 church plant for the next five years. Since it is something that is ongoing, and since we couldn't leave it for the headquarters to run the fundraising and its disbursement, uh, we put in place a governing board so that all the monies that are raised are known to the governing board. And within the governing board, we have also set up some subcommittees who scrutinize every application that comes to the board so that before funds are disbursed, applications are written from the various regions, churches, and then are submitted to the committees. The committees will scrutinize it, send back forms to those who are requesting for the fund and then upon that interaction 
uh, the board will decide as to how much should be sent to a particular area you know concerning their church plant or to help an existing church that needs help or to help the committees that are set up within the regions who are on the front line for this church plant and to support them so they will be able to accomplish uh, the vision that is given. Well, this has worked for us very, very well because when this was initiated, uh, we put two pastors who are with the fund mobilization, you know, to go negotiate with Ethel and then for Ethel to go all through our churches in Ghana and then explain this to them so that people will enroll by saying that every month I will support the missions fund maybe with 10 Ghana cities or with 20 Ghana cities. So through our local churches and our representatives there in the local churches, these monies come through them to Ethel and then Ethel will forward them to us so that it becomes you know, a lump sum that can be used to support the Vision 3000. Yeah, we, apart from the ETEL program, which has run up to this point, has run very well, we also put in place and expected that uh, the year Missions Fund Day will be participated by all and sundry. By so saying, I mean all our local churches. And any monies realized on the day will be forwarded through the district, through the regional council, to the headquarters, so that we will, it will be an additional, an addendum you know, to the fund. And uh, we'll be able to have more in the kitty for distribution. And then again, we also look to individuals to make contributions through our churches or directly to the general council and say this money i want it to be used for missions or for church plant and then uh, it will be put into the same uh, kitty for distribution so there are various means of mobilizing these funds <clears throat> to help us uh, realize you know large amounts of money for the work that is before us. We also plan that on the regional basis, uh, breakfast or dinner uh, settings will be done. And we'll talk about missions, we'll talk about Vision 3000, we'll talk about, you know, uh, the trainings that are being planned and uh, going on so that people will know what is being done concerning the Vision 3000. And then at that particular dinner fundraising or breakfast fundraising, people will contribute into the fund and it will be used for the same purpose. Ambassadors are people that has been selected by the committee to front for us in the churches, especially with the ETHEL program, so that they go to the church, local churches, explain why the ethel people are there and what their mission is and uh, how the contributions can be made through the ethel people to reach the missions fund here in Accra. So we call them our ambassadors so that they go to the field and do all this on our behalf. Money is realized in the missions fund is meant for the field work, the practical work that goes on with the Vision 3000 uh, committee. And so if it comes to uh, mapping, for instance, mapping the country, we support it from the same fund. If Vision 3000 is conducting a seminar for the people on the field, the fund will also go to support it and uh, any kind of travels that comes with the vision 3000 vision it's all supported from this fund so that we become the wheels for the vision 3000 program to help them and to speed the light 
the vision to support churches in deprived areas also will be done from the fund because we will look at these areas and then churches planted there you know maybe in the first year second year will be support pastors will be supported if it comes to where we should even raise temporal structures for them it will come from the same fund and so on and so forth so that it will not just be like planting a church in a deprived area and leaving it there to die no our desire is sustainability the churches must be sustained the workers there must be sustained and hence this fund you know becomes once again what i said the backbone of this church plant that is being done yeah i will say that uh, so far so good and uh, i am so glad that assemblies of god is engaged with this vision 3000 because time is running out for the earth and i believe that we must speed the light the word of god must be preached undiluted so that people will become saved and be born again into the kingdom of god and so i want to encourage pastors on the field that uh, they should do all in their ability to throw their weight behind the mobilizing of funds so we can use it to help the vision to come true because without money you know we will run but then uh, we cannot keep uh, the vision uh, still moving because money is important uh, the late benzina the host said that uh, without anointing you know you become dry and uh, without you may have anointing and without money you'll be stuck so we need both we need both anointing and we need the money to go and so pastors give us your unflinching support so far as the mobilizing of funds is concerned if you conduct your day missions day please bring the money don't keep it there you know districts should not keep the money there because it is meant for a particular you know vision and so you must channel the money to where it belongs and when it gets to the region, the region must make sure it comes to the general headquarters so that this vision can be realized. And so we want to thank you so for what you have done, you pastors, but I know you can do more. There is more room for improvement and we trust that you will help us to achieve this vision. God bless you. First, the church should preach and teach the gospel. The Great Commission is the mandate of the church. Many churches have made it a great omission. In Acts chapter 1, we are told to be witnesses of Christ in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and other most parts of the world. We should preach and teach Christ. Also, as seems of God, pastors, members, and all our sympathizers, we should make vision, 3000, our vision, we should make it our mission. We should make it our passion. We should plant churches. Any mission or vision or evangelistic activity that does not lead to church planting has not worth being called a mission. A new chapter and a new era has opened in our history. Let us all come on board and let church planting become the culture of our great organization. We work field of Together you and I Some fields are blooming now Other fields are dry